you're watching this video and you have been hearing a lot about coding a lot about programming i was just wondering this programming thing if i want to start now like Welcome back to my channel. If you're not familiar with this beautiful face, my name is Chiso Moko and I am a software engineer and YouTuber based in Lagos, Nigeria. So you know this channel is all about learning things in tech and today's video was inspired by a Q&A question that I answered a few months ago. So someone asked me, Chiso, assuming I want to learn how to code like now, how do I start? If that is what you'd love to know, stick to the end of this video. Is it this way or this way? This way. <laughs> Start by saying learning how to code is a very, very beautiful venture. It's something that's achievable and it's something that's also very rewarding when you get the hang of it. Now, before I start this video, I would love to say that for you to appreciate the art of coding, you need to understand some very little computer science fundamentals. So I would advise that before you start, the first thing I would advise you to do is to take the Harvard CS course. I will put a link in the description box. This course will help you understand some certain computer science fundamentals and also some fundamentals that you need to learn before you start coding so that when you finally start coding, you can understand exactly how you're doing. Because at the end of the day, coding is all about giving the computer instructions. So if you understand it that way, it's sort of like streamline or give you a better view of the thing that you are doing and to help you understand it better. So let's move on to the next step. So the first step is choosing a programming language. So usually I won't really want to bug you with the whole, are you doing web? Are you doing Android? I would just want you to choose a programming language if you're starting to learn how to code. And most people recommend Python because Python is beginner friendly, something that you can pick up. Python is very versatile, even if you're doing web, even if you're doing um, data, even if you're doing backend, Python is very versatile. Python has a lot of libraries, Python has a lot of learning resources, and Python is very, you can manipulate your Python code to literally do anything for you. So I'd recommend Python if you're choosing a programming language. And if you don't like Python, you can go with something else that you would Now, the second thing you want to do is setting clear goals. Why do you want to learn how to code? What is the end goal? What do you see yourself using those coding skills to do? So this is where the field comes in. Are you learning to code because you want to build the you want to build Android applications? Are you learning to code because you want to build websites? Are you learning to code because you want to go into cybersecurity or data engineering or DevOps? Know exactly why you're learning to code. And at this phase, this is where you can now pick what field that you should go into so that you can apply that coding knowledge to that field. So the second step is doing some research to know exactly what you want to apply your coding skills to and just taking it off. Now the third is when you've determined what you want to learn, I would advise that you go for online courses. And not just online courses, go for structured online courses. The good thing about programming language is that you can see resources anywhere to learn just that particular programming language. Like I think as I speak now, Free Code Camp has a one hour 30 minutes youtube video dedicated to just learning python and i'm sure they have it for other languages as well so let's say you want to go into web development now and you want to use python you're going to be looking for python for web development or you're going to be looking for plain python courses let's say you want to go into uh maybe android development now you know it's kotlin that you're going to learn and you're going to look, be looking for courses like Kotlin for Android development or plain Kotlin courses. So I'm just giving you like a structured way that you can type stuff on your search engine. Some other popular learning resources I recommend is um, Udemy, Udacity, Codecademy, Educative. I love Codecademy because it has like an editor where you can practice what you're learning how to code. Educative as well has features like that. So picking an online course is very important but make sure that you're going for something structured or you can even search on YouTube if you don't want to pay subscription for any of these platforms. YouTube has a lot of free resources that can help you. It can give you resources to last you for six months. 
So it just depends on the way that you look for these resources and your interest. So other things are people don't really like online courses. So people want something that can support their learning with online courses. I would recommend reading books or documentation. For books, if you're learning Python, I would recommend other means boring stuff in Python. It's a very lovely book for beginners in Python. Why I'm saying books is that with books, you can actually see this code and you can actually see explanations for these things, unlike what you get in probably online courses or videos. Documentations help as well because when you look at the documentation of the language that you're trying to learn, you understand things better. You understand syntax better. You understand keywords better. So I'm not saying that you should dwell on only online courses or I'm not saying that you should dwell on only books and documentations. Merge them together and just try to support your learning with books and documentations. So let's say you see something on the tutorial you don't really understand. You can check a book to explain it more or you can check the documentation of that language that you're learning so that you understand the syntax, the variables, the arguments and all those other stuff that might be complicated for you. So always try to support your learning with books and documentations. Another thing is practice regularly and code along with the courses that you are following. So by coding along, you're automatically practicing these things. Some people sit down watching a YouTube video and they just watch it like this. They don't do anything. They're not doing what their instructor is doing online. This wouldn't really help you much. So I would say that even though you do not understand what the person is doing, just be typing and just be doing it together. Why I'm saying this is because you, you're going to build a lot of muscle memory when you start typing code by yourself than just looking at it because you're not going to start understanding keywords, you're going to start understanding that you're meant to use a semicolon here, you're going to start understanding that you're meant to use a curly braces here and not like a normal bracket. So all those things will start being very, you start being very conversant with how to type your programming language, you start being conversant with code styles, indentation and all those other stuff. So try to follow along with your instructor when you're watching your tutorials and just follow along. Even if you don't understand something, you're free to pause, research on that thing, take, ment take a mental note about it and come back to what you're learning. But don't always stay idle when you're watching a coding tutorial. It doesn't. That could help you practice learning how to code, doing things that would help you in your problem solving skills, like writing algorithms with your programming language, doing things like data structures, preparations with your programming languages. I always tell people this thing has a way of expanding your knowledge about a certain programming language. Let's say you're looking for a Python library to add two numbers together or to find the square root of two numbers. You don't know those things before and it's not something that you just learn passively. But if you're actively practicing with that programming language and you do some research, you can apply your newly found knowledge to the code that you're writing. And before you know it, your knowledge about that programming language keeps expanding. So try to leverage your problem solving skills with the programming language that you know and also try to practice as much. Things that will also help is by reading people's code. It sounds boring, yes, but reading people's code doesn't only help you know more about the programming language, it also helps you see how to write, or oh, sorry, learn how to write clean code. And again, it depends on whose code that you're reading. It's not everybody's code that is clean. <laughs> so try to look for organized code online or a tutorial or a book and just try to understand how they write code, understand the flow, understand the algorithm and every single thing. So when you read people's code, like I said, your muscle memory, you're training your muscle memory, you're trying to understand, oh, this is how this person is thinking. I think I'll apply this coding paradigm or coding style in my next project. So reading people's code actually. Other things to note would be be patient and be very persistent. Coding is something that is is time consuming, it just leaves you stressed out, mental energy and all of that. But keep your hopes up, continue to be patient, continue to be persistent, continue to be determined and always see yourself. I always say this in all my videos. See yourself or try to have like a mental picture of where you want to be and also have a mental picture of where you want your coding skills to take you. So seeing that just has a way of motivating you. And lastly, I'll end with joining a community. Join a community of people that are learning the same thing as yourself. Python has a budding community. Web development has a budding community. I mean, every single thing you want to learn, 
there's definitely i can assure you there's a community for there's a community of people that are learning the same thing or improving on tools and technologies by using best practices so being in the midst of these people would help you learn and will also help you with your networking skills as well in case you need something or in case you need someone to help you on blog in a particular thing that and i'll say when you've got into a certain part in your coding journey that you have learned some things try to start building projects building projects gives you a real world understanding of what your skills can do it helps you to apply your knowledge and also gain deeper understanding of coding principles so if you can if you're confident enough i'm not saying that you should be 100 percent confident because that can never it might never come anytime soon but when you've got into a phase that you feel that you can start building something on your own then please go ahead it gives you an opportunity to apply what you've learned and when you finish doing that it gives you more confidence to push to learn other things remember that learning how to code is a journey and it is not something that is going to come really quick it's something that you take time to do it's something that you build upon it's a skill that you need to learn so keep going at it if you're someone that have, has already started learning how to code try to do things with the programming language that you're learning try to ask for help as well don't learn in silence don't learn in silo try to seek feedback from your friends and just seek help from them when you can and also try to take breaks as well because coding can get very daunting and you're going to feel like giving up but don't just keep going keep um striving to learn more keep improving your problem solving skills and at the end of the day you're going to be fine so guys this is the very short video and we've come to the end of this video i hope you learned something please leave a comment for me in the comment section don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe guys we're almost up to 2k we're almost up to 2k subscribers on youtube please don't forget to subscribe if you have any more video updates or if you have anything that you would love me to answer for you please don't hesitate to put that in the comment section for me see you guys in the next video bye